everybody, uh, the topic of my presentation is the impact of limited budget on the corrective action taking process. The online of my presentation is as follows. First, I will introduce the problem definition. Second, I will talk about the methodology. Subsequently, I will discuss the simulation model. Finally, we will talk about the computational experiments. First, I will start from the problem definition. In practice, since the project executions are always a present deviation from the business schedule, project delays and cost overruns might, might occur. Therefore, the project to process to repair project to identify project problems and repair project delays is of great importance and necessary. This figure illustrates the project to process. During project execution, at each tracking period, when the project is expected completed, the project performance is measured and compared with the predefined tolerance limits. When the project performance drops below the predefined tolerance limits, warning signals that indicate the project is in danger are generated. Corrective actions to repair the project delay are necessary. In, the, in, in our research, we consider activity correction as the only possible corrective action. Activity correction is achieved by investing more money to reduce the activity duration. However, in practice, the money for taking corrective actions is always limited. This, this money is not always available at the initial stage of the project, but released gradually along the project progress. In literature, some authors study the project to process with unlimited budget, which means corrective actions can always be taken when necessary. However, Martins and Van Hook consider a limited budget for taking corrective actions during the project progress, which means corrective actions can only be taken when the budget is enough for taking corrective actions. However, in this study, the budget for the money, the money is fixed along the project progress, which means the money does not change a lot the, during the project life cycle. In practice, project stages are always subject to different levels of project risks. Therefore, different amount of corrective actions are required during the project execution. The question of our research is how to allocate the limited margin to take corrective actions to optimize the project outcome. Second, we will talk about the methodology. The general idea is to allocate the budget according to the possibility completion of the project. And this figure shows when the project is 25% completed, 25% of the budget will be allocated to this tracking period for taking corrective actions. However, the percentage completion of the project of the project can be measured in different ways using the cost information, the test, the time information, the cost and time information, and the risk information. Based on different project information, we propose for different budget allocation models. The EV approach makes use of the own value matrix to allocate the budget according to the cost information of the project. Therefore, project phases with the more cost accrues will receive more budget for taking particular actions. The EV approach makes use of the own duration matrix to allocate the budget according to the time information of the project. 
in doing so. Project visit with more duration of tools will receive more budget for the project manager to take a part to the actions. The ES approach makes use of the on the schedule metrics to allocate the budget according to the time information and cost information of the project. Therefore, project visit with more time and cost of close will receive more budget for taking practical actions. The AR approach makes use of the schedule risk analysis to allocate the budget according to the risk information of the project. More risky project phases will receive more budget for the project manager to take a the actions. When we discuss, when we discuss the previous day about the four budget allocation models, it is referred to as a non-abortion. However, Allocating the budget in a dynamic, in a dynamically increasing motion or decreasing motion may lead to better results. An increasing motion starts with a relatively low budget allocation, but increases the way the project progress. The increasing motion is the same for projects where the project information at the own stage is not reliable or accurate enough. But the quality increases with the project progress. Uh, the decreasing motion follows an opposite behavior. The decreasing motion starts with a relatively high budget allocation at the early stage of the project. But the budget allocation decreases along the project progress. The decreasing motion is the same. The decreasing motion is the same for projects where the corrective actions at the early stage may have a significant impact on the remaining project progress. Next, we will talk about the simulation model. The simulation procedure consists of three phases, the scheduling phase, the execution phase, and the evaluation phase. The scheduling phase takes place before the project execution. During the scheduling phase, the baseline schedule is constructed and tolerance limits are set for the project progress. During project execution, at each tracking period, the budget for taking part to the actions is expected. The project performance is measured and compared with the tolerance limits. When the project performance drops below the tolerance limit, corrective action and the budget for taking corrective actions is enough. Corrective actions will be taken. Otherwise, the project passes to the next tracking period. At the project completion, the project outcomes are evaluated. In our research, we propose the control efficiency and control effectiveness to measure the project outcomes. The project control, the control efficiency is measured at the output divided by the total input. The control effectiveness is measured at the extent of the project outcomes that have been achieved. This paper shows a high control efficiency is not always in accordance with the high control effectiveness. Therefore, our final goal is to explore an approach which combines the high control efficiency and the high control effectiveness. Finally, we will talk about the computational experiments. Six experiments are performed to compare different approaches, compare three versions to reveal the impact of a project networks, the impact of buffer sizes, the impact of corrected actions, and the impact of control budget. Our results show that the ED approach performs best in top down project control while the EV approach performs worse, which means 
allocation the budget according to the time information leads to the best results. For the ED approach, more budget is allocated to projects in phase with more duration of growth. And hence, more room for corrective actions is made available. These corrective actions must have a, this, uh, which means these corrective actions must have a significant impact on the project duration. However, for the ED approach, more budget is allocated to project phases with more cost accruals. These budget are not necessarily uh, have a significant impact on the project duration, but must affect the project cost. Therefore, this is exactly, exactly the reason why the ED approach performs best in top-down project control. But the EV approach performs worst. Performs worst. The results also show the increasing portion is preferred for top-down project control with a limited budget. While the, the decreasing portion is recommended for the top-down project control with unlimited budget. Subsequently, the results show. The ED approach improved the effectiveness in parallel projects for top-down project control. Finally, the results show frequent corrective actions with a small reduction are suggested for top-down project control with limited budget. Our future research will focus on two aspects. First, the proposed approaches should be implemented and tested on real life projects to validate our approach and to find a way to further improve our findings from the current research. Such an approach is promising but not always easy. Since finding enough information about practical actions is not always practically possible. Second, the budget allocation models should be extended by TP, should be extended by taking the limited availability of renewable resources into account. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is my presentation. Uh, any questions are welcome.